Change your mind? Oh, am I talking over there? Am I talking over there? Why did you change your mind on that roll? Okay, so today is Rio's first day here. And we are going to establish him coming to me when I call him. And this is something that we will work on every time I put him out here. I always start with that. Um, this way I know that he's coming to me for guidance. And when you, when you prepare them with a uh, start like that, you almost always get them to believe that if they have a problem and they need to find out how to make that problem better, check in with you. So, I'm going to go ahead and prepare to send him until he wants to be caught. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get him to catch me. Rope is all in from my lesson. So he's new here. He made some friends last night. We're going to go ahead and I am stuck here. And uh, get him thinking about me instead of the buddy who just called back. So he's got a buddy who makes fast friends with everybody. He's a great leader as well as a good friend. He's fair. A little bit fair. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of drive him around and try to draw him in. So I'm going to invite him to come into me. Here. 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 So the real time is very, he thought um, people were invisible. So he just rode right past me and didn't even acknowledge that I was in here with him. So I was invisible. Still, no look at me. So I want to get him where he wants to connect with me. And until I can get him to do that, we're just going to keep asking him to check out. To check me out. And as soon as he checks me out, I'm going to give him an invitation. Kind of funny that the first split second that he checked me out, he said, "Oh, I go to you." That was pretty nice. So we'll work on that every time. Some days it won't go as fast. Some days until it's really a solid where he understands the cue here. Yeah, good. So I'm gonna get him doing a few body movements for me. Go ahead. Get him to do some yield. I'm going to back up. Good. Good job. I'm going to go out on the circle. Good job. Now, I did have several sessions with him at the barn he just came from. So, some of this stuff is going to look to him. So, it may not be like first day. But it's his first day seeing it, his first full day here. So, I'm going to establish my, my uh, go cues. And I'm also going to establish my cue to tell him to get out off the circle because he's going to keep cutting me in right here. And if he keeps cutting it in right there, then I'm just going to establish my out cue. My out cue is going to be directed at his rib cage and it's going to be telling his rib cage to move away from me. And this way I can get him to learn how he's expected to yield at his rib cage so his whole body on an arc out. So I didn't ask for the trot. I'm just going to wiggle him back down to a walk. Out. Good. So what he did by picking up the trot was obviously it was energy that was different than it was. 
time I let I let my energy lower, but still told him with the same body language I wanted his ribcage to move. So I'm going to tell him to trot now by raising my hand ahead of him and asking him with a kiss to pick up the trot. So raise my hand ahead of him. Leave him alone. He's doing what I want. So this is a little bit of a displaced thing. The flipping is goes up and down. He's actually like trying to get air with his top lip. So he's got a couple of when he checks in with me, I can let him know you're doing a great job. Keep trotting. Now I'm going to stop him. Tell him to stay out there. Nope, go back. Out there. Let him know he did a good job. He's very, very uptight right now. He's very, very quick to be like, oh, uh, uh. Okay, so I'm going to tell him. To, nope, I'm going to tell him that was the wrong answer. Pay attention to me. There you go. So just a gentle bump to say, ah, 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 it's not it. Pay attention to me. Since he wants to talk, I'm going to go ahead and kiss him. Into it. I didn't end up kissing the point. Good. You're right, yeah. Yelling at somebody this morning. How much walking she was doing, and here I am walking around. Yep. Good. Right. And I'm going to yield him to the make him stay out there, stay out there, stay out there. There's like three steps you brought in. I just want. I'll come to you. Good job. So the next thing that I worked on at the farm that he just came from is putting my bareback pad on him. And he had a little bit of a, oh no, I don't think I want you to do that. So we got to get him through that because we have to be able to ground tie him and throw a saddle up on him and have him say, okay, that's cool with that. So I'm going to go ahead and work on that for a second. I did work really hard on it last time, so apparently that sucks. Um, never hold a horse back. I thought I was going to have to work on that a little bit, but it's the work that I did last time we worked with the saddle was uh, good work. So. I'm not going to say, oh, you need to be bad so I can show how I fix this, because I already did. Right, Katie? Right, Katie? Those original videos are from, with an indoor arena, so you'll see, this is the first time you're seeing him in an outside environment, so that should be helpful as far as which one from somewhere else. that much more smoothly than it was My next goal is to get him move this and take of this wrapped around his belly. I have done this before. Um, it wasn't something I did on a regular basis. Visited him at the other barn, but it's certainly something I have done before. I have been on this horse once. 
to do much more than walk and explain to him, you know, what that's all about, but I have been on his, so the first day I get on his, the first time. But exactly what I want him to be able to do. He stood his ground tied to focus on the ground, and he did not move for that entire process. So now I'm going to ask him to kind of get away from me. We don't know if that's going to pinch him. Oh my God, oh my God. So we're going to ask him to go ahead and pick up that shot and see what happens. If his tail clamps down, you know he's going to think about bucking. So now what he doesn't know is changing the direction. It's going to be a pretty good way to pinch the belly with that cinch. So I'm going to teach him to change the direction right now. He was caught and I wanted to depart at a trot. Do another change. Good. I'm ask him to stop. Stay out there. Take another step back. He didn't come in, but I want him to take one step back to the straight. Good job. What a good job. Good guy. Ah. Yeah. So perfect pads don't have to be crazy, crazy uh, tight. Kind of why I, I do everything in bareback because I'm lazy. I don't feel like carrying a saddle on a pad and all that stuff. So a lot of times I use bareback pad because I'm lazy, to be perfectly honest. But the other reasons I use bareback pads is because if they go to get jumping and stupid on me, it's not going to take much for me to get off. I don't got to think about pulling my feet out of stirrups. I don't have to worry about a saddle horn or, or even a pummel. Sometimes it could get you right in the gut if you're trying to get off quickly. Um, I don't have to worry about, you know, being out of balance or out of feel with it. You know, with, I'm in a lot of touch physical feel with the horse with the bareback hat on than I am with a saddle. So I prefer bareback pad for most of my first rides, most of my first gates, anytime I do their gate work. You know, if they get to bucking and I need to bail out, I'm able to bail out without getting hung up on anything. Head must have shrunk. So that's, you hear that banging? That's my big guy, Teddy. He decided I was supposed to feed him before I came out here. So he's never seen my mounting block, but he does know the mounting block work. I have done that with him already. We're going to do that up here in the shade. We're both a little bit more comfortable. Every time I do mounting stuff, I show that my mounting block is nice and solid on the ground. I don't get up there and wobble around and then try to get on the horse, so it's a good practice to have. So he knows this well enough, I think, that I can get up here. I can send him past me. A little taller than the one I've been using. Tell him to stop. Tell him to over. Recognize this. Yep, you do. Yep. He just dipped his head down and told me, I recognize what you're doing. Over. Over. Think about it. So, he needs a minute to process where he is, what's different, a taller. Yep, looks the same. Yep, there you go. You got it. Hey. Hey. So, kissing was the wrong thing to do. I was doing that more to get his attention, but I always say, don't kiss at a horse. God, when you want him to stand still, because kiss him, go. Nope. Tell him, nope, 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 that's not an option. We're going to do this here. You're not done. 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 You're
always blow a horse's minds and say, if you even have a conceived idea that this might mean I'm going to jump on you, look at this, I'm not. See if I throw a little more spray on him, get him a little less distracted by the things that are distracting him. Take my gear to so many different places now that I'm going to leave something I need behind. Good job. I'm going to do lots of work. I'm going to do it with reins on, so if I decide that I'm ready to get on, I'm not going to have to change stuff. very connected to me right now, which is nice. I'm going to take him so he will go forward. Yep. Let him think it through. Yep. Come on. Yeah, done. Excellent job. Good job. So one of the things that I tell people all the time, especially when I do bareback work with other people, is it is so unsafe right now and hold it over the horse and try to slide on from the mounting block like scissor like doing the split. The reason that's so dangerous, let's give you a couple of scenarios. The horse jumps away from the mounting block and you break the pelvis because you ended up doing the splits in a very abrupt way. The horse runs forward while your leg hooks over them. You fall down off the mounting block underneath their belly and they step on you with that hind leg. They freak themselves out, they kick you in the head. So many things about getting up for bareback, sliding over like you're going to do it as a split thing, is not very bright. That's what I say. I'm not trying to imply people aren't bright. I'm trying to say if people don't think through the danger of the way Horses are thousand pound squirrels. And it's easy for them to get spooked, and it's easy for them to get scared, and if they don't like being ridden, they're going to let all those excuses of things happening around them be what might spook them away from the mountain block. Always go across your horse with your... <laughs> that was a big effort. Yes, it was. With your belly button just past the wither. So I always make sure that my hip bones, my pelvic bones, um, I think that, yeah, my pelvic bones are across the center of their spine. This way I'm kind of in position, and then I'm able to be up my whole up torso up over the horse and my leg over all in one fell swoop. So I'll show you the beginning part right now. This is how I would start any horse bareback. I keep my head up, so I don't climb over with my head hip towards the ground. I keep my head up and straight. Let me get him for you. He's really making me mad, isn't he? Yeah, I'm going to make him for you because I'm the best. Yes, I am. I'm going to be your best friend. I'm sorry, but that was not very best anyway, huh? I stomp up on the mounting block and kind of give them that's their first cue. That's what happens first. My hand goes into the strike of pose. If that doesn't work, I start snapping. 
that doesn't work, I try to guide their front feet a little bit. Okay, hey, Casey, you're far enough away, I can blow a kiss at him. Yeah, done. A little more. Over. Good job. Again, my belly button clears him. Ran at me a big horse. I'm just practicing, you know, be a little figure and poo like, you know. You have to, you know, do a little practice on the ground, do a little practice leaping off the mounting block, do a little practice on the knee, getting yourself to where you bend your knee, enough to provide yourself with the explosive spring you need to get that far up on the horse, no matter how tall your horse is. Um, either get a taller mounting block or uh, get good spring. Time and lay across him. I'm going to ask for that that ride. So I'm going to ride on the side of him. Good boy, you're right. You're right, good boy. So he came from close, really. So I always keep my left rein. Now I'm going to ask him to go. But. I wiggling my fingers causing that snap to make noise. I didn't want that. Good. 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 So see, by establishing my kiss to I can kind of tell him what I want him to do. You're okay. You're okay. And I've gotten my hoe installed. But head around. So our first one made him okay. It's okay. There we go. We're gonna tighten this up a little bit. Come on, don't get on me. Bring it down. I need a little steering power, so I need the other rein attached properly now. So, let's try to go. Wait a minute. I'm going to be a little scary now. Since the mounting block, the mounting block works, he doesn't associate good. He doesn't associate that with being a riding thing. So I'm going to ask him to go. I want him to more or less only see me out of his left eye. I want him to see me out of his right eye. But I want to keep his nose tipped a little bit to the left. So if I have to shut him down, I can shut him down. Good. 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 Okay. Good. Again, the mounting block should mean nothing about riding. This happens to be where we do this. We should knowledge of what I want. Yep. Yep. I think forward. Good. Good. Um, he is a little farther away than I want him, but I'm okay. I don't have, I, I rode a horse that's a little, <laughs> we're going to do another side ride. My, uh, my legs are extremely sore in the split position, so I can't do that, not on him right now. <laughs> so we'll do another side ride. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't check to see if my legs could do that today. So, I'll do another side 
dry. <laughs> You're okay. It has nothing to do with you. Come on. You did good. Come on. Over. Hey, hey. Talk to me. Over. Over. Good. Good. Over. So I'm going to give him the benefit of not him. Normally I would do this later from after they've been fed later. And today I had an opportunity to get out here a little bit earlier, so they're waiting to get fed inside instead of me pulling him out of the field. And 
kind of vowed to myself if I was going to get the opportunity to play with him, even if it was just at the other farm, uh, I really, really wanted to get this horse to feel like he could connect with people. So, working on it still, but I do feel that I have a pretty good thing going now with him, and uh, it'll only get better. It went from nothing to this, so I know it'll only get better. He's a good guy. I like him.